This program brought to you by HCF's Fit and Well and Hunter Homeland. Hi and welcome to This Is Your Life. Well, here we are in the centre of Sydney and just around the corner at that hotel, we're about to surprise a veteran of Australian television. She started out as a 14-year-old co-hosting a children's show, then became a household name as we first had breakfast with her and then lunch. Now, although she's been axed a number of times, she's done more live television in this country than any other Australian. At the moment, she's presenting a $1 million cheque to a charity she worked so hard for. And that's where we thought we'd do our sting. So, come along. Welcome to this uh, ceremony that marks the conclusion of the Guide Dog Capital Fundraising campaign. Now, I'd like you to, if you wouldn't mind, come forward and present to Gavin Laws the cheque for the million dollars, which represents the efforts, uh, fundraising efforts of the campaign. Gavin, congratulations. Now, look at that. Not only is the biggest cheque I've ever presented, it is the biggest cheque, physically. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, Carrie Ann. What are you doing here? How are you? What do you think? <laughs> Carrie Ann Kenley, this is your life. Oh, God. <laughs> you think you're going to lunch, don't you? I hope so. <laughs> you're not. And you had a dinner engagement? Yes. You don't. And but I haven't had my hair done. And the nails are done, so you can too. So we've just taken over your life. Oh, my heavens! And, and you're not allowed to open that. Oh, God! I mean, Dave get one of those for years. Now, free drinks or what? <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of mates in the audience here. There are. I'm just looking. I can hardly see, but I'm looking, looking, looking. And, and of course, look, tonight uh, wouldn't really be the same. We wanted to make it uh, as close to the good old days as possible. And of course, we had to have a band. band would be complete without the maestro. This is the kind of thing she loves. The Thank snap you. of that box. $250,000. And 800 people have told me, make sure the diamonds hang down. There we are. Isn't that lovely? Just for all... Do I How get much? to take it home? <laughs> $250,000. Worth every penny, I say. Yes. You'll have a fantastic night. Go oh. get them. Thank you. Thank you. I'll tell you, Jeffrey. Carry on, please. Take your seat. You are born Kerry Ann Wright on the 22nd of September, 1953. You are the youngest of the four children to Grace and Eddie who's a Brisbane building contractor. Kerry ann you're a beautiful and perfectly behaved child, and even as a toddler, it is obvious that showbiz is running in your veins, particularly Barbara Streisand numbers, is that right? The odd one. The odd one? You knew everyone off by heart, we're yeah. told. OK. <laughs> Still only a little girl, you tell your whole family that one day you will be a renowned performer, even if that means you showing no interest whatsoever in the family's vegetable farm. And, and she, she did, did no, no work, work whatsoever. whatsoever. <laughs> it's your sister Jan, yes. brothers Russ and Malcolm, and your mum and dad. Oh. 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 Come up here, just 
of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was looking for all them out there and going, hang on. Jan, let me start with you. Was she really that bad on the farm? Well, yeah, she wasn't very good. She used to sort of do more eating than, than picking of fruit. But, uh, but she's made up for it since with the hard work, I've got to say. Was it tomatoes, wasn't it, that she... It was. Love them. Yep. We used to have a lot of problems with bite marks out of all of them. <laughs> Russ, what was she like as a baby sister? Oh, goody two shoes, but there's one incident that comes to mind. I was working in Sydney quite a few years ago. And uh, I decided to go back home for a holiday and uh, I thought I'd play some of my records. I looked around, couldn't find the records and asked Carrie, where are they? She said, oh, I didn't think you needed those records, I sold them. I needed the money to buy some real music. <laughs> and you never saw them again? Never saw them again. How could you do that, Carrie? Eh? It was 30 years ago, get over it! <laughs> <laughs> Mr Wright, you must be very, very proud of it. I'm very proud of Kerry and all her achievements and uh, I, uh, I think there's one thing she hasn't achieved yet, having a lot of trouble with, it's getting out of the bunkers and the golf course. <laughs> <laughs> now, and Mrs Wright, you actually told Kerry some advice, you gave her some advice. Well, the only time. advice I could ever give her is to say, stay natural, be yourself. <laughs> and I think she has. And I think she has. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm really very proud of her. Yeah. Thank you all for coming in. Now, Carrie ann you're OK at school, but you're much more interested in rounding up all your friends and miming records with them. True? True. Then at 14, you notice a children's TV show is inviting schools to audition performing groups. And like a bull at a gate, you organise an act and find yourself in the limelight. My boomerang won't come back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we, we have managed to find and reform that group from 32 years ago, consisting of Suzanne Germain, Kayleen Curtis, Diane Messer, Bruce Duncan and the host of the kids show, Jim Eilert. Good to see you. Good to see you. Jim, oh, it's so lovely to see you. Thank you. Oh, my heavens above. Yeah. <laughs> Suzanne, if I can start with you, what was Kerry ann like as a 14-year-old? Um, she was a lot of fun. Um, we used to ride home from school together on bikes and sometimes mime in front of the mirror, sunshine lollipops. And um, right. Kerry was always organising us into groups and always keen to get on TV. She rang Channel 9. Next thing, we were up there and the rest is history. <laughs> she was a real little girl, wasn't she? She right. was. <laughs> Kayleen, your memories? Well, Kerry and I used to share a lot of things at school. Um, we used to share lunches and my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> we used to share drinks and my boyfriend. Um, a few rude jokes, which Kerry never got. Um, and also my boyfriend, which he never got. <laughs> Have you forgiven her? Oh, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> and Jim, what did you see in this young 14-year-old when she first walked into your life? Uh, it was just a natural talent that, that had to be, uh, you know, have an outlet, and that was Kerry. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you must have learned a lot. Honestly, if it hadn't been for Jim Eilif, um and all of us having such fun doing um chuck away well, that was... <laughs> I might do a quick version now. No, sorry. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, go on, go on. I I still remember it. Yeah. Um, if it wasn't for you, Jim, I would never, I doubt whether I would ever have gone on to have as much fun and, and, and work at the things that I've loved in my life it, if it hadn't been for you and the years that, that you mentored me at, uh, at Mount Cuthra at Channel 9. It was my greatest pleasure. <laughs> Very nice. Thanks, everyone, for coming in. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Oh, 
So your TV career takes off on this show which is called Everybody In. It starts out <laughs> as a daily children's show, but then it becomes teenage pop. Right now, I'd like to tell you about Streets Ice Cream. Streets Mount is a brand new taste treat from Streets, and it's only five cents at your favourite store, and it contains banana and strawberry, and it's just two delicious, Greg, and I love them. And there's one for you, Thank and you. I might give this one to the audience. I don't know. But a million kids would be out for me. Only five cents. You co-host and perform for four years. At 16, you leave school, but your mum insists you have something to fall back on in case television doesn't work out, didn't she? Oh, yeah. Which was? We had to go to secretarial school and learn, re you know, shorthand and typing, and I even did counselling. That would make you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and you told your mum something when you came home with a certificate, didn't you? Yeah, I will never, ever ever do this for a job. <laughs> You're 18 in 1971 when you moved to Channel 10 to host the Saturday show. It's a live three-hour National Teenagers program. But you're not there too long before you decide to take off and pursue a solo singing career in New York. Now, we will find out all about how Carrie Ann goes in the Big Apple straight Whoa, after the break. Oh, we're getting nervous. But, but, <laughs> but first, some of your international friends. Hi, Carrie Ann. This is Jackie Collins talking to you from Hollywood. But tonight is all about you. You're the little girl that was first on TV since you were 14. You've hosted more live television than anybody else, and you're doing fantastically. So I just wanted to be here with you tonight and say congratulations. We had so much fun at my house in Hollywood, and you were kind of looking at everything, and we were having fun and doing gossip. Gossip is good sometimes. So have a wonderful night, and congratulations. Hello, Carrie Ann, and many congratulations, and well deserved. One of the problems authors and actors and people who travel all over the world doing interviews has is whether they're dealing with a professional, whether they're dealing with someone who's even read the book or knows anything about you at all. In all the years I've known you, it's been the striking characteristic. You are the ultimate professional, which is what keeps you ahead of the others. Have a wonderful evening. Hi, Carrie Ann. This is Rod Steiger. I'm very upset, you know. I knew and you knew about our affair, but the whole world in Australia didn't have to know. So you must have told him you watch out because I'm coming to get you. Welcome back to the life of Kerry Ann Kennelly. Carrie Ann, at 21, after touring Australia and New Zealand as a cabaret singer, you end up in New York. Now, why New York? For some reason, even growing up, I always thought New York. I never thought London or Europe. For some reason, America and New York fascinated me. I don't really know why. And you had a ball, too. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we know. We know. Because it's also here you try your hand at acting. But your dream is really to make it as a singer. And we've managed, Carrie Ann, to dig up some of those original demo tapes from America. Have a look oh. at this. Never made it there. <laughs> <laughs> well, while you were there, you start dating someone who is to become your husband, John Kenley. She said, she said if I ever let them do this to her, She'd kill me if she didn't tell her. <laughs> Will you? It'll be close. You won't. <laughs> It'll be close. Touch and go. Uh, John, you launched uh, Lotto in America, you in New York, and you, you launched soccer pills here in Australia. Was this lady much of a gamble? Oh, look, I met Kerry in New York, and she was like a breath of spring when I first met her, and, uh, oh, we fell in love. She changed...